off top. You know the Las Vegas Strip? Not actually in Las Vegas. Technically, it's in a city called Paradise. Play the music. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show. I know you didn't know that because I didn't uh, know it. That's the most flummoxed I've been by one of these. We <laughs> got some weird ones. Really? The, I mean, yeah. the, the physics ones, they don't get you the space ones, which I guess also in some ways are physics. The animal joints, they're not the history. None of that gets you the idea that the Las Vegas Strip is technically in Paradise, Nevada, not Las Vegas. Uh, blows your mind. That's Long right. Extension. That's more surprising to me than animals that have ears on their stomach. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I think I mentioned this, but for Ashley's birthday, I'm going to take her to uh, the Usher show in Vegas. So this is how most of my uh, off tops come to me is just like, hey, this is interesting. Teach me something new about this thing that has entered my life. Uh, I started doing some some thinking about how I could tie it to the or find off top that ties to the Draymond Green situation. But they all lead to sad places about human psychology and stuff like that that are really frustrating and disappointing. But I think uh, just about all I'm these. Sure, are, I'm yeah. sure in Vegas you can pay someone to stomp on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you might try it. I'm getting old. It's time to try some new things. Figure this out. Um, the Draymond situation to me is uh, all the big like social things that we talk about, especially in sports, are often tell us more about the people talking about it than the um than the incident itself and like trying to be honest with myself about why I don't feel like he should have been suspended I mean it's not hard to figure out it's something I talk about all the time it's like it's my union background that bleeds into the way that I feel about these things and it's not even that I think Draymond Green what he did wasn't punishment worthy it's that I don't like the idea of commissioners and leagues having this amount of power because when you can say, like it's based on someone's history, that's like vague. It's not like, I would love hard and fast rules. And, and that tends to be like how society works. And I understand the spirit of the law and not the letter of the law, but the spirit in the law is giving a lot of uh, leeway to the league. And it's like the idea of individual rights versus the collective good, because I am not going to lie to you. Like I, I understand the perspective from the league side is what is best for the collective in this situation is to get Draymond Green out of there. Because I mean, I think that you look, you look confused and well, I guess yeah, you could argue that the Warriors winning this series is probably better for the league warriors versus Lakers in the next round potentially is something that we all that would do better numbers than the Kings and make more money, I guess, and all that stuff than the Kings versus the Lakers or the Kings versus the Grizzlies. However, the way that I look at it is to be clear, I'm sure everyone knows by now, but I think it doesn't hurt to go through all the things that happen in this situation. The Montez is like flopped and then grabbed Draymond Green's ankle. And we all assume that this was strategic. Draymond Green responded by stomping on him and Sabonis then uh, laid on the ground. And I'm going to assume that he was writhing in legitimate pain. Uh, whether he was or he wasn't, it doesn't matter. He's writhing in pain on the ground. Draymond Green gets thrown out of the game. And he responds to this by taking his time, leaving the court, calling people in the audience. Uh, derogatory word that is also used to describe cats and yelling and taunting uh, the audience or the, the crowd. And then he finally goes to the locker room. All of this happens while Adam Silver is live in attendance. And the reason why I say that the best collective decision, even though I believe it to be unfair to Draymond Green, the best collective decision is you don't want this to happen. And this is coming on the heels of Russell Westbrook getting into a verbal altercation with a fan. The emotions are high, and the history of the league is one that involves uh, Dennis Rodman kicking a photographer in the groin, the malice in the palace. Uh, wasn't there their partial owner for the for the um, the Warriors got thrown out because he was a little too handsy? Like this is a game that kind involves, of yeah. Like the the benefit, one of the benefits of these games is how close you are to the action, 
and you're always on that line. And I guess that's why I think the smart thing to do for the league is not to get Draymond out there because you ex- you believe that Draymond is going to have a problem. It's to send this message. And it's to say, look, we ain't going to have this. And if uh, Draymond is the example that we're going to use to set, then from the league's perspective, that's fine. From the Warriors' perspective, that's not fair. And from Draymond's perspective, that's not fair. And I get it. You could argue that he deserved to be suspended because a stomp is just as violent as a punch. But I guess in my view, the way that we I think about when a, a punch leads to suspension, it's not like when you are entangled with someone and you're flailing and like you chop them in the face or hit them in the face, which is what I would say that this was. It's like, no, you line somebody up, you go chest to chest, you're talking trash and you swing. And whether you believe that Draymond could avoid stepping on Sabonis or not, which I think he could have, that wasn't this. This wasn't like a premeditated. This was kind of heat of the battle, which deserves to get thrown out of the game, but in my view, doesn't deserve to get suspended. But then, and probably wouldn't get suspended if he then didn't then go on to do all the other stuff that I think the league probably fears more, even more than a player fight is like inciting someone from the crowd because all you need is thousands of people or at least hundreds of people who are within throwing distance, tens of people within spitting distance of Draymond Green. All you need is for one of those people to not take kindly to Draymond Green taunting them and misunderstand that Draymond Green is being a showman at that point and throw something at him. And then you got a problem because I mean, I guess the players will hold Draymond Draymond back, but you don't know. And they can't stop all the fans from coming on the court. So, like, it's it's a thing that I I also understand. Greenberg, when I was on Get Up this morning, we talked about, we blew out the show and ended up talking about this the whole time. And his argument at one point, but he came off of it eventually, was what happened is good for the league hmm. because it makes it more interesting. Hmm. And I got it. I think he came off it eventually, but I get the point, but it's one of those things that it's a risk, you know, because I, I agree with him, frankly, is that having Draymond do all this stuff and it stopped where it stopped, assuming Sabonis isn't actually injured, it makes the game more interesting. It makes it all more exciting. It makes it cements Draymond, as you and I have talked plenty of times, that um, sports is entertainment and what we like in entertainment is like clear rooting interest. It cements Draymond as a villain uh, and it, like further like lift this underdog story <laughs> who's a third seed underdog story who's coming on taking on the big bu- bullies it's like it, it makes for a good storyline and a series that is otherwise feels like it's getting close to foregone conclusion territory but it's not worth it what it like blowing out all the football in the show today because you know the nba i don't know if people don't know this behind the scenes of espn it's, it's probably pretty obvious but the leagues are competing for uh, like airtime on ESPN because they believe that free promotion leads to like more viewership and more fans and the NFL dominates year round. We talk in football. You know why? Cause y'all watch it and y'all listen to it and you seem to care about it more than anything else. And it's hard while in football season, we don't be doing, we'll do two minutes of like a basketball off season story, but in every other sports season, we talk in football. When it's dead this summer and we don't have no sports, tune in. We're going to be doing countdowns about football. We're going to do, remember when this happened last season? And we're going to be comparing everything in football, projecting division winners before camp even starts because y'all love football. But for this to happen today, even in the playoffs, we don't blow out a whole show of get up for uh, just basketball, certainly not one topic. So, but I, I mean, I don't think Adam Silver in the league office is that short-sighted that they're like, oh, this is awesome for us. <laughs> Let's win the news cycle by releasing this story at 1130 at night. But I don't know. I, I guess I, I felt the need to like be completely like transparent about where my biases lie and all this. And there's also like the confirmation bias. And I, I heard somebody on on uh, social media somewhere. I don't remember who it was make this point it wasn't connected to this story at all it's just a general point that people assume that their thoughts are right and because it's your thought it must be right and i'm trying to get better at understanding that just because i generated a thought 
does not mean I'm right. Like I have just as much a chance of being correct about my opinions as anyone else has. And we're all bringing in our biases and emotional attachments. But I bring that up because it connects nicely to the NFL draft. Because the NFL draft is a lot of people thinking that their thoughts are right. <laughs> and everyone assuming that, oh, I know which quarterback is better. When none of y'all actually know, I know that you have to be this height to succeed until quarterbacks who are under that height succeed. And like, I get it. I have strong opinions about draft prospects, but when you're building a team, and I think this has probably been the genius of the Eagles run so far mm -hmm. is like collecting these picks. Is it a mission that you don't know what you're doing? Moving on from a quarterback that you paid a ton of money is an admission that you don't know what you're doing. And, and you're willing to come off those ideas, even when you're extremely financially committed. And this is a big decision for a lot of teams right now at the top of the draft. I feel like this is a two person show, but I haven't allowed it to be such. So like <clears throat> Charlie, say something. You took off your glass. You put your contacts back in now. What's going on? The allergies, you get the allergies. I, I haven't had glasses on all day or all day today. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's amazing. Pat today day eye drops. Shout out Pat today. If you want to sponsor <laughs> us and send me a case, they really did the trick. Um, yeah. So you want to talk about the quarterbacks of the draft? Sure. I guess I, I want to open it up because I said a lot about Draymond and then I transitioned to quarterbacks. I, if you had anything on Draymond, we can go back to that or we can go quarterbacks in the draft. I also wanted to get to uh, DeMar Hamlin being healthy and ready to play. There's lots out mm -hmm. there. I want to talk about the Eastern Conference playoffs and and how good they are, how deep they I got a lot on my mind, Charlie. I, I want to do one second on Draymond just before okay. we go to the draft. And I know that I've probably just derailed all of the progress you you laid out with that monologue. But Draymond not playing in game three sucks for the NBA. And it sucks for the NBA and the fact that it sucks for us as fans. And this is like, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the fairness of it. Mm -hmm. You know, quite frankly, I don't really care if it was fair, if it was suspended or not. It's unfair to me because the Warriors can't stop the Kings. And it sucks to take one of the two best defenders of the generation out of that game. And we're not going to watch a series that feels like a fait accompli if the Warriors go down 3-0. And they yeah. could have won game two if Draymond had been in there for the last seven minutes. And now this is the story of Draymond's career is that he might have cost them the 2016 title. I don't really believe in that theory. He still played in game six and game seven. He and balled, he's yeah. going to potentially be, you know, the death knell in the dynasty this year. if They get swept out of the playoffs in the first round. And so I, I guess I'm just arguing with Greeny, but this yeah. definitely sucks. Yeah. I mean, I, like I mentioned, Greeny came up off of that point, and I understand all that. And I, what sucks about this is Draymond has probably been – I mean, he's not better than Steph, but he is an incredibly unique player that, like, was integral to facilitating this dynasty, which has definitely been a dynasty. Yeah. Uh, and what sucks for him is that – the thing about him that is unique, and that, that tends to be the case, the further we get away from someone or something, like they become more one thing in our mind. And that thing is like the thing about them that is most unique. And the thing about him that is becoming most unique, once it was like a small guy who can play big enough that mm -hmm. it gives them these small ball lineups. But it seems like the story is going to be his unsportsmanlike conduct as as the the league office put it and that sucks because none of the and we saw it last year as much as last year was a Steph coronation Draymond was terrible for a stretch of games and then he wasn't and that kind of like changed the way that the series was going yeah. the finals at least and we were talking about Draymond like stop doing podcasts and and maybe it's passed him by and then he showed up and the team's fortunes changed. And yes, Steph was MVP. Yes, Wiggins might have been the second runner up. But what Draymond did was different. And it's something no one else could have done. And that's what he's done over the course of his entire career. And it sucks that, to me at least, his, uh, his legacy is going to be more like Ron Artest and Dennis Rodman than... Uh, like Scottie Pippen. Right. And it's, 
it's it's interesting because like on a basketball court, Draymond Green is a litmus test for how you watch basketball. If you see his triple singles and you're like, ha ha, Draymond's not putting up numbers. You're, for lack of a better term, moron to not get how good he is at basketball. Um, and so you see people do that stuff and you're like, okay, you don't get it. This guy's the ultimate winner. That's complicated now. That's actually complicated now yeah. because his lack of control of emotions, and he knew he was going to stomp on him there. Yeah. He did it out of frustration. Is costing the Warriors with a precious window with one of the 10 best players of all time and Steph Curry chances to win with this core. And each one of those chances are precious. And it is tough to be the ultimate winner, the ultimate glue guy, and someone who has potentially cost them multiple deep playoff runs and yeah. multiple chances at titles. And we hear often about how this this bad comes with the good of Draymond Green. He has to get himself into this like uh, volatile place emotionally to provide what he provides to the team. I'm not going to argue against it uh, because I don't know. I'm not in his head. I don't know how it works. Like I... I can count on my hands the number of times where I felt like I know what I was going to do next. And yeah. I played football. So like, again, I'm not in his head, but, and I, and, and they weren't even times when I was on the field because on the field, like you understand, like I'll get mad when somebody does something dirty, but like, eh, I kind of know what's going on. Like I understand what we're out here for. It's like in normal life, there's been a couple of times where I was like, where I felt like a level of rage that I was like, I'm not sure, you know, that afterwards I looked back and I was like, damn, I was. And the idea that Draymond gets there every game, <laughs> like he, every game of, of consequence, he gets there. That to me, whew, the emotional I mean, psychological toll it must take on him is he is built different than me. And it, it makes me feel like I can't buy this stuff about you get the good with the bad, but I also feel like uh, he does it in practice too. Apparently, yes. Jordan Poole will tell you that he needs to get to that level in order to practice hard. Like, huh? I don't know if, if we, if I'm willing, if I'm going to accept that, then we have to celebrate how few incidences Draymond Green has had, considering how many games he's played in like that. So, I don't know. Shout out to Draymond for uh, load managing his emotions most of the time. <laughs> All right. Well, you already ruined my graceful transition. Into, yeah, I really did. I'm sorry. Into, about that. into the draft. So that's all right. It's fine. The people understand. Um, before we get to the draft, though, I, I ruined my second transition. It feels unfair what we're doing to the Kings. This is going to be Schrodinger's draft, by the way. I wonder if we can get to the whole rundown and yeah. continuing to tease the draft. I like it. That's a good plan. Uh, unfair we're doing to the Kings. Let's give the Kings one minute of, hey, you're awesome. Mike Brown's really good. Uh, the decisions they're making, the strategic decisions, along with the talent decisions, all the way back to, and I brought this up, I think on Debatable, the trade for Sabonis was like one that, I I mean, I honestly didn't have the basketball knowledge to disagree with it, but all the people whose knowledge I trusted was like, why are you giving up Halliburton? He's better than De'Aaron Fox, which is still probably true, but it's about roster construction and they needed something that Sabonis uh, had that was rarer and that was a good decision. And now in this micro of the decisions of this series and the performance of the players in this series, it's been really impressive. It's not something you see often. This team is supposed to win a couple of games, be happy about it, and then come back next year a little better. They actually are dominating in a way, or not dominating, but winning in a way that surprised me. Is like close yeah. games at the end, they're able to pull away. They show they perform better in the clutch than the four time champs. I think there's something interesting going on too with this where the West is beyond open. It is, we don't know about anyone. Yeah, right. it, and I, myself included, have put this sort of theoretical cap on how good this team is. They're young. We still don't know when Deer and Fox is going to sort of uh, stop, you know, redlining in, in the in crunch time. That, that ceiling is stupid. Like, yeah. sure, they could lose in the next round. Sure, they could maybe they'll lose in six to the Warriors, and who knows. But the team seemingly is as good as anyone in the West. And I would be, at this point, 0% shocked if they made the conference finals. I would be 0% shocked if they won the conference finals. I don't think they won the NBA championship, but nothing what they do is fluky. They're playing the way they did in the regular season. And if I may give a little pitch to the uh, Kings marketing team, 
they have light the beam. But <laughs> if you really want to go full heel, you are the heir to strength in numbers. Can we get some purple and silver gigantic Kings strength in numbers banners to troll uh, the Warriors <laughs> on their way out of the playoffs because you are the team with the transcendent uh, point guard and the big that can do everything like Draymond and all the shooting. The this reminds me so uh the the way we're talking about the Kings and I know thinking the Kings and Kawhi Leonard are similar is ridiculous but it feels like I'm at least for me I'm having a similar experience where it's like. No, they were this good. And I knew this. And why was I acting like he wasn't or they weren't? And that's how I feel about Kawhi in that he's showing us uh, in all of the games, even the game that they lost. He's showing us how good he really is. And we don't think about him the way that we think about the rest of his peers because he hasn't played enough. But like, he's just as good as Kevin Durant, as much as it pains me to say. Uh, he he should be in the conversation with LeBron, but like his career was different. The injuries were different. He started uh, without his own team. He had to move to find his own team and go a bunch of different places to find his own team. But I I don't feel that test when someone releases a shot, whether you believe it's going to go in or not. I don't know that I feel more comfortable with anybody shot in the air right now than I do with Kawhi and I'm including Steph Curry because his shots are a lot more difficult. Most of the time I refuse to include Kevin Durant. I always believe his shots are going in. So he's not quite that good, but also the defensive impact that Kawhi has. He's just, he's awesome, man. It's unbelievable. And um, I don't, I don't know if the Clippers are going to win this series. Like they don't, they aren't as good as the Suns. They're deeper, but it's really right now Kawhi and a bunch of role players. And it's not like the Toronto role players. Like these guys are true. Yeah. Okay. Guys. It's not like Kyle Lowry and um, Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Van Fleet. Um, coming but up the thing bench, that, yeah. yeah and the, the, there's some interesting stuff here because he's never going to have the accolades of other guys who are top 10 players of all time. He'll never have the points. He'll never have the minutes. He'll never have the um, all-star teams and the MVPs, but I want to ask you this. Game seven, NBA finals, everyone's healthy. Is there anyone who's in this postseason who you'd rather have than Kawhi Leonard? Anyone? Hmm. Game seven, everyone's healthy. And the options are people who you would talk yeah. about, you think about the guy yeah. is Giannis, the guy is Curry, LeBron, Davis. Right. Um, that's really it. But Tatum. I mean, if you're including bigs as Jokic and B. Yeah. Right, but I would. They have not had overwhelming playoff success yet. Yeah, but I mean, if you're talking about this yeah. year, yeah. Um, but I, I still would uh, lean on the side of a wing if I'm. Yeah, I'd rather have a great wing than a great big, which may be ridiculous, but. Um. Yeah, I. I wouldn't laugh at anybody who chose Kawhi Leonard. I think it's just personal uh choice. I still wouldn't choose Kawhi Leonard, but like. I'm I would probably regret it. Picking but Giannis. Watch, uh yeah, I think I'm picking Giannis. Maybe, maybe KD, honestly. Because I, I think the reason why I would go with uh KD or uh Kawhi over Giannis is like the as unstoppable as Giannis is, there are limitations to his game. And the shooting ability of Kawhi and Kevin Durant is and like the free throw shooting and all that stuff i don't know i guess you have to weigh that against like legitimate rim protection like kd can protect the rim but come on it's not like Giannis protects the rim and Kawhi can protect the rim and roam off of people but it's not like um Giannis. Uh, yeah i think i just talked myself into Giannis. (laughs) yeah i I think i don't know this is a stupid question it's impossible i don't think it's stupid because it's actually like that's sort of how that's how we all end up thinking about basketball. Oh, it's the end of the game where you have to dump the ball to someone or you have to get a stop. Who do you want? And for yeah. me, it's Kawhi. And it's been Kawhi yeah. since like, it's been Kawhi since 2019 when he won the title. Like even in 2021, the year that Giannis uh, won the championship and dropped 50 in the closeout game, he was playing the Suns because of an injury to Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Kawhi I has think, been the dominant right. playoff performer for other than LeBron. He's been the second best playoff performer over the last 10 years. You're probably right. 
on both sides of the ball. Kawhi is, Kawhi is going to defend the hell out of whomever he has to. And, and he's so weird. It's yeah, awesome. And he, and he can shoot. And he's he's going to have some weird non-celebrations. I saw at one point he, him and KD got tangled up. And he, like, instinctively, I think, reached to help KD up and then caught himself and, like, snapped out <laughs> of it and walked away. And was like, oh. So did weird. you see the did you see the play of the loose ball where there was a long rebound and it looked like Durant was gonna be able to pick it up and take it to the rim and him and Kawhi were coming careening towards each other and yeah. Kawhi just stuck out a palm and grabbed the ball and had it and then like in one motion it put a push ahead dribble and took it up the floor. He's ridiculous. He's such a freak. Yeah, he is. All right, um, I'm gonna force us back to this football topic that we've been teasing. I think we exhausted all NBA topics other than like, let's all hope Giannis is back. It's okay. Sorry, Heat, but I want Giannis to keep playing. Yeah. Um, the draft. I'm not sorry, Heat. <laughs> the draft. I guess there's a bunch of things happening right now. So we got the draft, and it's all about quarterbacks. We have four quarterbacks, I guess, who people. I uh, believe are in contention. And then there are other quarterbacks who are available, including apparently the 49ers are shopping Trey Lance without shopping Trey Lance. Mm -hmm. uh, people are calling about Trey Lance, which I find hard to believe, but I guess I'll take the, uh, the reports as fact is that people are calling about Trey Lance, but the 49ers aren't shopping him. They just this is also after, some calls. after John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan said they would trade anyone at that GM summit thing. So yeah. it's like, come on. <laughs> And they also were flirting with Aaron Rodgers recently. Like it seems pretty clear that whether it's injuries or something else that they are looking to get away from Trey Lance and hairline. <laughs> yeah. That's sad. Poor guy. And also like the coaching that they've done or the coaching that Kyle Shanahan has done in the roster construction outside of Trey Lance has been really impressive because the trade alliance decision is a decision that gets people fired. Yeah. Like all that they traded to get up and get him. And then he has not panned out that gets people fired, but they still find themselves in championship games. <laughs> so that's all very impressive, which suggests to you that these guys know football, but they still can't pick a quarterback and no one really can. And I think admitting that is the first step to like figuring it out. And so right now, it seems like everyone's come back around to where we started and where I've been the whole time is like the quarterback is Bryce Young, right? Like he's yeah. the first quarterback. I know that he's small and I understand the risk, but I want to get the guy who played the best and he's clearly the guy who played the best. And I've seen lots of breakdowns of how his height impacts the way that he plays and it and he passes up on throws that other quarterbacks can make but it's not as if his production is impacted by it I think the only concern legitimate concern is that he's going to get hit he's going to get sacked by really huge men regularly over the course of 17 games can he survive that I don't know the answer to that. Nobody knows the answer to that, but I guess that's a better question to me to have than can he learn how to play quarterback, which is what we're talking about with Anthony Richardson, you know, and it's like CJ Stroud is like, can he consistently make plays outside of this simplistic Ohio state oh, super talented system? Uh, and he wasn't even great all the time there. Like that's a, a bigger question to me and I think Will Levitt's people uh, it doesn't seem like he's in the same class as far as far as these other three guys even including he's, Richardson who didn't have also the production. older than Trey Lance yeah <laughs> so he is what he is but I mean you can argue that his yeah. his situation the talent that was around him and the plays that he made with that talent around him uh bodes well for him going to the NFL because the talent disparity won't be nearly as big. So like, I can get the argument for all of this, for all of these guys, but I think understanding that you don't know, and I know you like the idea of the Panthers trade and everything to move up to the top spot. I don't know. I guess, and maybe it's just cowardice in me where it's kind of like, I'd rather not give that stuff away because you know, I've said this a bunch of times is, the, 
the best quarterback is the quarterback that lands in a good situation. And we run through yeah. this a bunch of times that all the great quarterbacks in football right now, most of them, with the exception of Joe Burrow, which you could argue his situation is pretty damn good too. But most of them started in great situations. So giving away draft picks that could and that could help you create a great situation to get a quarterback who I don't know is going to be like a transcendent difference maker to me is hard to justify. But you're going to justify no. it. No, no, no. There are two ways I could justify it if I were to. The first one is to take Anthony Richardson. It's a, if you trade up to the number one pick and your risk profile is, hey, I want a chance to take someone who could be the best right. quarterback in the world, not named Patrick Mahomes. There's one guy in this draft who has the talent to do that, and that's Anthony Richardson because he's the biggest, fastest, strongest, most athletic guy to ever play the position. Do you want to know who his combine numbers are the most – like closely correlated to oh it's it's not a quarterback i assumed it was it it's vernon davis oh god he is a two inches taller physically vernon davis playing quarterback with a trebuchet attached to his shoulder um that's the person i think you could invest in you can give the picks because the the ceiling is there it doesn't totally make sense to me to uh um move up to just take a wee lad um but the other thing that I found fascinating is if Tepper is truly a, someone who's playing the probabilities and the leverage, and he wanted to trade a lot to get to the first pick because he knew the Texans were obsessed with Bryce Young. Right. And if he could recoup a lot of assets and move to two and get a quarterback that he liked just as much, which is not something that I would have done, but I find it fascinating right. from the perspective of just being in the power position. Yeah, I get the advantage of being in the power position, but I don't get – the Texans being foolish enough to trade, to move up one spot. Like unless someone else is going to take that trade and get Bryce young, then Bryce young is going to fall to you. If you assume that the Panthers don't want him. or, Oh no, the Panthers, I think will take. Right. Bryce, I agree. Bryce. But like, I, I guess to me that, and maybe that's just the Panthers understanding what I'm saying, where it's like, all right, we don't really know but this is who we would take. But if you guys think you really know, we'll take your assets in order to yeah. allow you to have this guy, which would be smart. Vernon Davis. So I got a Vernon Davis story for you. A couple of them, probably. We played together in college. He's younger than me. He came in a couple years after the, after me and from Dunbar in D.C. He showed up on campus. They tried to put him at receiver. Uh, he didn't quite have the quickness for that, but he showed up immediately on campus as strong as anyone on the team and as fast as anyone on the team. And it did not seem right. Um, and then I guess his sophomore year, he was coming to his own pretty, like one of the best tight ends in, in football. And I remember we were practicing without any pads on. He caught a ball and ran over Josh Wilson, who was a corner we had that ended up playing in the league for a little while. And I was like, I guess I was a senior on the team at that time and felt like, all right, I guess I need to police this. So I ran over and launched into Vernon's back and knocked him down and prayed for the next three seconds that it took him to get up. He got up and went back to his huddle and I survived barely. I don't know who was going to fight him, but it wasn't going to be me. Somebody was going to have to come to my rescue. Like I came to Josh's aid who I think Josh was Vernon's year, but somebody was going to have to fight that man. Cause he would have eaten me. That wasn't, that was not going to be a fair fight, but like, you got to do it right. Like that's as a senior on the team, like, uh, all American player, like I'm supposed to be out here setting the tone, and we're not gonna have you in helmets running people over just because you think you're the man. Vernon's a good dude, though. You know he's a rapper now and an actor. I didn't know that. Get on the YouTube's. Check hmm. out my man Vernon. Hmm. Well, now imagine having to uh, be that scared tackling a quarterback every single time he gets to the second level on a broken play. He's in a movie with um, Samuel Jackson coming up. I think I feel like I saw a trailer. I'm I'm serious. Like the man, you remember? IMDb. You remember he was on uh, Sports Center and he had to act. So uh, you don't remember oh, yeah. any of this? Oh, no, you I remember this. Sweet potato yams like, too. It was it was pretty uncomfortable and awkward. They shouldn't have done that to my man. But he like brought himself to tears. Emotional. Oh my god. Oh my. Check out his IMDb page right now. He has the most airbrushed forehead I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Don't be a hater. No, it looks like he looks amazing. 
Speaking of foreheads, Stephen A. tried to make fun of me this morning and say that our our hairlines were similar. I saw what? that. That's outrageous. Like I, I'm not gonna argue that I got I have the hairline that I once had, but I'm not in shave off territory. And if I, I am, was, uh, I was watching that clip though, and I you missed you missed an opportunity to turn to Stephen A. Smith and say the temerity. The unmitigated <laughs> gall to say that uh, to me. Uh, Have your five head say that to me. <laughs> you know what I thought? Um, I was, for whatever reason, I guess it's because I was on an ESPN air. I, the comeback that I wanted to give, but I decided not to give was, you know, the Jimmy V speech, don't give up, don't ever give up. That was not meant for you and your hairline. Oh my that God. Was, you, there are times. Jimmy V hadn't met you or your hairline. There are times when you should give up. So please call it quits. That's what I wanted to say. But instead, I just was like, uh, we aren't in the same neighborhood. I don't got that cul-de-sac. Like, I, yeah, I got a little creep back. If I turn to the side, it looks a little better. Straight on. It's yeah. I feel like my hairline was bad. probably here at one point. Was it? I think so. But now, bomb. I mean, oh well. You're, you're get on YouTube. Now. You can check out my hairline. Yeah, I mean, I'm in there. I'm hanging in there. It don't matter. Um, I feel like we've said enough things. Yeah, I agree. Me too. Go watch Vernon Davis. Definitely. Appreciate Draft you, Charlie. Richardson. Oh yeah, <laughs> Draft Anthony Richardson and watch Vernon Davis in his new movie. I don't know what it's called, but I know I saw a trailer and. Samuel Jackson was in it. But yeah, he got real credits. The man's a real actor. Look at all them credits. Good for him. Second career. All right. Thanks, Charlie. This is a weird way to end the show. I'm weird. Oh, well. Thank you, Christina Buswell, Sarah Abbott, and Adi Khan. And thank you guys for listening. I never ask people to rate, review, or do any of that stuff. Do that stuff. Bye. This is the Dominique Foxworth Show. 